The American Infantry Battalion had one of the most stable organizations of the Second World War. Some minor changes notwithstanding, the template of April 1942 would serve throughout the war. Shown here is the organization including the June 44 update, which would be the final wartime amendment. Three of these battalions were organized into an infantry regiment, three of which formed an infantry division. Broadly speaking, the American battalion followed a common layout of the time. There was a headquarters, headquarters company, three rifle companies and a heavy weapons company. But it stood out in some aspects as well. Most noteworthy are the rifle companies, which were very independent. They had a large headquarters with administrative duties, as well as their own heavy weapons platoon with mortars and machine guns. On top of that, the Americans had the most impressive wireless communications of the war, with every platoon being connected through short-range radios. Starting our more detailed look at the top, we see a tiny HQ of just four officers, one of them being the lieutenant colonel in charge of the battalion. This small HQ was offset by the large HQ company, which contained not just command and control elements, but also heavy weapons. Its administrative duties were kept light, as this was delegated to the companies themselves. The battalion HQ section was responsible for staff work and intelligence gathering. For the latter task it had its own scout section. The communication platoon facilitated internal communications, connecting battalion HQ to the company HQs, as well as up the chain to regimental headquarters. The ammunition and pioneer platoon did supporting work, such as carrying ammunition to forward units, road repair and mine clearing and laying. Finally, the anti-tank platoon was also part of the HQ company. It was made up of three squads, each armed with one AT gun towed by one truck. By 1944 this was the 57mm M1 gun. The battalion's fighting elements were its three rifle companies, each usually commanded by a captain. Keeping a company up and running was a large headquarters, which included cooks, clerks and messengers. Seventeen so-called basics were kept at company HQ. These were replacement men that would be sent out to reinforce a subunit that suffered casualties. Special weapons were also pulled at the HQ, consisting of five anti-tank rocket launchers, six automatic rifles and six submachine guns. The company's subunits were its three rifle platoons and one heavy weapons platoon. The rifle platoons were usually led by a lieutenant and consisted of a small headquarters and three squads. American squads were large with 12 men and had an uncommon armament, a Browning automatic rifle as their only automatic weapon, but semi-automatic rifles for all the other men. Three rifle grenade launchers were issued per squad, which served primarily to fire anti-tank grenades. Supporting these light rifle platoons was the job of the heavy weapons platoon. It consisted of a light mortar section, fielding three squads, armed with one 60mm mortar each, and a light machine gun section, fielding two squads, armed with one belt-fed machine gun each, for a total of three mortars and two machine guns per company. Just like how the weapons platoon would support the rifle platoons of a company, the heavy weapons company would support the rifle companies of the battalion. It even fielded the same type of weapons, only heavier versions. Taking a closer look, we see a sizable headquarters commanding two heavy machine gun platoons and one medium mortar platoon. Each machine gun platoon consisted of an HQ and two sections, in turn consisting of two squads, each squad operating one M1917 water-cooled machine gun, adding up to eight guns total. The single mortar platoon had an HQ and three sections, each section containing two squads, each manning one 81mm mortar, resulting in a total of six. Lastly, the level of motorization shown here is deceptively low. This is because most transport was pulled at higher levels. The battalion's cargo trucks were organized in the regimental service company, and the battalion could be fully motorized using quartermaster truck companies assigned to it from higher headquarters. The same is true for the battalion medical section, because it was organized as part of the regimental medical detachment, even though it served with the battalion. 